Hello, I'm Rock Childhouse, and uh, I, I I love educating people, um, passing on information, knowledge that I know. It's uh, been a long time career. I was in a true hardware store the other day, and uh, a fellow shopper was on his phone arguing with, I assume it was his wife, and uh, he needed to buy a replacement electrical switch. And her response was uh, something I, I didn't hear that part of the conversation. It needs to be ivory. Well, that's a color. It's not a function of a switch. And he's looking at all these various switches, uh, trying to find out which one he needs. And um, I kind of interrupted him, and he ended the call, and we had a discussion, and I think he got the right switch. So he, he was confused, and, and we had a discussion about how these various switches work. And I'm going to provide you that in the video today, in case you don't know. Uh, it's kind of fun, kind of interesting. I learned it a long time ago. Uh, associated with um, lights and switches and whatever else, I uh, found another one the other day on plugs. Don't ask me why I found this. Um, it was just kind of curious. What's the purpose of the holes in the prongs? Because if you look at some devices, they don't have holes in their prongs. In other devices, they do. Uh, there's a lot of myth about these. Some really good research on the internet. And I, I searched them down to the industry standard of where these holes go and whatever else. They do not engage anything in the uh, socket, in the receptacle. They're there merely for alignment during manufacturing. If you have a bunch of these, you can put a dowel rod through these to hold them in, in proper alignment as you're forming the plug. That's all they're there for. There's no mystery thing. There's no contact inside the um, socket, uh, the receptacle, that locks into these to hold them in place. There's no outlet that you can put this in and then put a rod through so it can't be removed, uh, whatever else. I'll, I'll tell you something else associated just because I happen to know this. If you see an electrical outlet with a green dot on it, that green dot means that you can use that electrical outlet in an oxygen-rich, like hospital, medical care facility environment. Pretty cool. Okay, let's go talk about switches. And the caveat I'm going to give you is I'm going to use the terminology that I learned as a kid. And one of the most enjoyable jobs I ever held was I worked for one of the largest true value hardware stores in the Chicago metro area. I learned a lot. It was a super job. And the other thing is uh, my dad did everything around the house and I learned about electricity from him and through uh, an associate of applied science degree in aviation technology. I do a lot of uh, electronic stuff. Uh, I, I enjoy learning. So let's get into it and let's explain some of the terminologies of electrical switches and how they work and how you can use them. And it's actually pretty interesting. Let's go. In this video, we're going to be dealing with alternating current, AC current, the stuff you have in your house. Uh, people commonly call it 110, 115, 120, 125, various values like that. Uh, actually, it depends on where you're physically located at, what your power supply uh, electrical company is giving you. This is, a, this is a basic circuit we're going to be working with. We, we have in alternating current what we call the hot in the neutral or the potential in the neutral. And I'm going to try and maintain the color coding and identity as we go with this. So the hot is going to come across the top as red. It's going to go to the light bulb, which I have. Uh, okay, it's a hokey little image, but it's, a, it's the load. You have to have a load, otherwise you pop the circuit. No load, uh, no resistance, pop the circuit. And then it's going to go down to the neutral. In this one here, we have no control devices, so the light is always on. Switches are control devices. Fuses, circuit breakers are protection devices. Lights, toasters, televisions, computers are loads. So this is a basic circuit. No control device. We're now going to start adding switches. This is what I learned as a single pole switch. And to give proper credit, I think I copied this image off of homedepot.com and it's of a Leviton switch. I may have copied it off of Leviton.com itself. 
So that's my source. Uh, if you notice, it actually has three terminals on it. The lower left is a ground terminal. It's not used to conduct electricity through the switch. It's used to protect you from being shocked, from, from creating uh, an injury or harming you. The two contacts on the right are where the electricity comes in and the electricity comes out, depending on where the toggle position is. And it really doesn't matter which you put line to, which is your source or the load, which is the light in our case. Uh, it really doesn't matter on this one here. You can go either way. However, you'll notice something on this switch that you will not see on the other switches. When the toggle is up, as shown in the photo, it says on. If you flip the toggle down on the top of the plastic of the toggle, it'll say off. It's the only switch that we're going to talk about that has a label of on or off for obvious reasons. Okay, this is an image of a single pole switch, two-way switch, also called two-way, on or off, um, in place. And when it's flipped up, and I'm showing it as down because it, it goes opposite in the system, in the physical switch, when it, when it closes, the light comes on. When you flip it up, the light goes off. And that's how simple this is. There's no options. You either have the light on or off. There's no options to it. We're going to get a little more complicated here in a second. This is the Leventon three-way switch, and that's the way I learned it. And it has four screws on it. The lower left, green, is ground, standard coloration. Uh, not there for current flow. It's there for safety purposes, and it should be hooked up. It is not neutral. Do not hook uh, ground and neutral up together. There are different items. The bottom right hand screw is a slightly different color and that indicates that this is going to be either your supply or your load side of this switch because these work in pairs and I'm going to show you that in a second. So in this one here we're going to hook up our supply to that lower right switch. Then we're going to take two wires and run from the upper screws to the same two screws on the next three-way switch and we'll show you how that works and out of this we're going to get an interesting um, markup. So here's a diagram and I'm going to call these switch toggles in relation to their position because it no longer matters. These switches do not have off or on. When both toggles are down the, electric, the electrical flow goes straight on through and illuminates the bulb. Hey really great. Not a problem. When we flip the left one up and the right one's still down, the flow comes through the left switch, the left three-way switch to the upper strand and stops. It's, it's an open. It doesn't go anywhere because the second three-way switch is still connected to the lower strand. The light goes out. When we flip the right three-way switch up, now we have a complete circuit again. Uh, source comes in from the left, goes to the upper strand through the left three-way switch across to the right three-way switch, comes down, illuminates the bulb. Hey, really cool. And then we flip the left one down and the uh, source, the current, comes in, state goes on the lower strand, uh, comes to a dead end because the right three-way switch is still selected to the upper strand. This is why this switch has no on or off. If, if, a, if the light is on and the toggle is down, flipping it up will turn it off. If the light is off and the toggle is up, flipping it down will turn it on. It doesn't matter which one of you these you switch, flip either one, the light will do the opposite of whatever it's doing now. This is what I learned as a four-way switch. And as with the other switches, there's a safety ground, that green screw lower left corner. The two bottom screws are one color, the two top screws are a different color. There's no on off on this switch because it doesn't really have an on or an off. It depends on how the other switches are configured as to whether the light's going to illuminate or not. So when we put this together, we're going to need to feed it with another three-way switch and it's going to need to feed another three-way switch. And this is how it looks like. So in this scenario, and I'm going to stick with my switch positions in relation to up or down. The left three-way switch is down. The center four-way switch is, I'm going to call it straight through. 
and the right three-way switch is down. At this point, the current flows in from the source, the hot, illuminates the light bulb because it's a continuous circuit. The next thing is, we flip the left three-way switch up. Now, the electrical flow would go to the top strand. It meets a dead end in the right three-way switch because it goes straight through the uh, middle four-way switch and the light goes out. The next step is we go to that right three-way switch. We flip it up. We've got a complete circuit again and the light comes back on. With that option, we flip to the center and we flip the center switch. The center switch doesn't go like the three ways on the left and the right. It either goes straight through or crosses over. So when we flip the center switch, the electrical co uh, current comes in from into the three-way switch, goes to the upper strand, comes across, hits the four-way switch, goes to the lower strand, goes from the lower strand to the right three-way switch, and at that point it reaches an open, the light goes out. So the next step is we take the right three-way switch and we flip it down and the light comes on because the current comes in the first uh, left-hand three-way switch goes to the upper strand comes to the center four-way switch which is a crossover or a straight through it now goes to the lower strand it hits that uh, right-hand three-way switch and uh, completes the circuit and it and the light goes on okay there's something really interesting with these four-way switches when you combine them with three-way switches uh, and they have no on or off because you can mix these switches up any way you want. If the light's on and you walk to a switch and it's up, flip it down, it goes off. If the light's on and you walk up to a switch and it's down, flip it up and it goes off. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, so there's no on or off. But there's an interesting feature with these four-way switches. And how many can you put in a row? You can put as many as you want. As shown in this picture, we now have a three-way switch on the left, two four-way switches in the center, and a three-way switch on the right. So the configuration of these requires that the four-way switch at the end, at the beginning or the end of a run, connects to a three-way switch. That's the requirement. How many four-way switches do you want? As many as you want. So you can chain as many four-way switches as you want. You do have a little current cost, uh, current loss as you go through. So the issue with this is the two-way switch, the first switch we looked at, was the cheapest switch in the inventory. The three-way switch, which feeds this left and right chain, uh, is the next most expensive, and the four-way switch is the most expensive. And what you need to run uh, between all these switches is multiple strand, multiple wire uh, cabling. You need at least three strands going into this mix. You need the neutral to come from your load back to your uh, fuse box, to your circuit breaker box, and then you need the source to come in to feed that first three-way switch. Then you need two strands to go from the three-way switch to the four-way switch, and two strands to go between each four-way switch till you get to the three-way switch then you can go single strand back again. This is really fun. Um, so color and I hope the uh, guy I met at the hardware store got the right switch. Uh, one of the questions he asked or he said was the switch has an on or off so that kind of narrows it down as to what type of switch it is. It wasn't a three-way or a four-way switch if it has an on or an off. That's how this system works. It's really cool, really fun, and you can use this uh, in low voltage, you can use this in DC, you can put this uh, concept into your boat if you want to control uh, a light down in the hull from the cockpit of your boat or from down in the hull. You can, you can use the same concept using uh, micro switches or whatever else. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. It was fun. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope to see you in another one. To finally close this up, there is electrical code. Uh, it's fairly standard throughout the country, but not 100% standard. And the electrical codes uh, that I've been exposed to, green is always ground, white is always neutral, reds and blacks are either hot or switched hot, so you don't know. Uh, my warning is, my advice is, 
when you're going into a circuit, make sure it's cold. Use a circuit tester. You can go to a big box store. Uh, you can go to Harbor Freight, whatever. You can buy a multimeter to test circuits for, for less than $10. Um, and Or you can start popping circuit breakers and, and pray you got the right one. Um, I would advise you against believing that every house is wired correctly and in accordance with code. I have found white wires that were hot. I have found green wires that were hot all sorts of things and it's just a lot of fun getting into older houses or houses where other people have resolved issues uh, by working with the resources they've had. That's not bad, that's reality. It happens. There's a phase tape out there, it's electrical tape that's different colors that you can take uh, your white wire that you're using is hot and identify both ends with uh, black or red phase tape indicating that they're no longer neutrals, they're hot wires but what happens if the phase tape comes off? Um, or you find it in the middle of the run and you want to cut it with a pair of dikes and use it as a neutral. Um, just be very cautious. Uh, I enjoy working with electricity. Thanks for watching.